I'm flower, aka rose. Uh, a person who takes way too many notes is, am I reusing? I think so, but I took actually way too many notes for this book. Like, actually, it's not okay how many notes I took for this book. Um, uh, you want to say anything? Other than my dog's Oh, <laughs> um, my name is Fish, aka Stingray. And I literally went to my to Chrome to look up uh, my highlights on the Goodreads website because I forgot how to do that on the app. <laughs> because Goodreads is not user friendly, even though I've been using it since 2019. Yep. You think I would know how to use it by now? Yep. Anyway. Yep. Um. Oh my god, Bella is doing that thing where she has her nose underneath her arm and she's curled up in a ball. It's so cute. Uh, anyways, um, this is very much a stream of precious podcast. <laughs> yes? Not the folklore font on this ad with these obviously lesbians and it looks historical. This is so you. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about, but I believe in you. Um, An ad on three. <laughs> <laughs> Um, oh, great job. Don't worry. <laughs> oh, thank you. Um, do I even have my phone with me? I don't know. Um, I don't know where it is. <laughs> I'll find it someday. Um, anyway, stream across this podcast. Uh, very similar to how we talk to each other on a daily basis. You couldn't tell from us um, going through the intro and going off topic already. <laughs> uh, there's just less dog photos and Instagram reels sent. That's it. That's the only difference. Um, on today's episode, we're going to talk about Unleashed by Bella Jacobs. And of course, I have to start with asking you, how many pages of notes do you think I took? Nine. Yeah. Because you told me. Yeah. And I remember. With my uh, big brain. It's In my brain fog. <laughs> Not the brain fog. Um, you wouldn't let it go, so I can't let it go either, bestie. I know. Um trying to find my phone and I can't find it. Um, yeah, it's <laughs> it's one page on my iPad, uh, which is the first four chapters, and then the power outage happened. Um, so then, uh, I switched to doing it physically while I could see while the sun was out. Um, during that 56 hours of power, no power. Um, it was a good time. Um. And so, eight of them are just physically. And I switched it up partially through. I started doing it by, like, I did it similarly where I took notes uh, throughout the chapter. Like, as the chapter was going, I took notes like I did with Dino Stud um, and whatnot. But I started it out as bullet points like I did on my iPad. But then I switched to just writing giant blocks of text out with my thoughts in blue. Um, and, yeah. You know... I would just like to let everybody know that I'm 50% of the way in the six middle. Right. And I'm taking notes because it's going to be an episode. I would like everyone to know that uh, this is a true six video is like 586 pages. I'll, I'm going to laugh. That's actually the number of pages. I think it is. Um, and I only have a page and... There's like a quarter of the second page left in a normal composition notebook. Mm-hmm. Translation. Rose is insane. Insane. Rose is insane. Um, but I just write tiny because I don't want to use 500 pages. Yeah, no, so. I'm like changing. So the thing is that, like, of course, I'm learning as I go on how best to do this right. So, like, I'm. Not even a hundred pages into a soul to keep spoilers for like future episodes, I guess. Um, and so like you know, I'm taking notes for it, right? So my notes mm-hmm. for it was very ritual, like initially like how I did for Dino Stud, which made sense for Dino Stud because it's like a hundred pages. But a soul to keep is five hundred plus pages. That makes no sense. So now I'm switching it up. So every time I read a hundred pages, I stop and write a summary of those hundred pages. That's what's going to have to be. Because otherwise, I'm going to stop every sentence to, like, write something down. Which, like, yes, it's very yeah. important about the way that he carries her. But, like... It really is, so he's not gotten that far. <laughs> Dude, 
kind of like that book too much. Spoilers for that episode, but like I'm having. No, I'm. I'm only on chapter three still, right? I'm, 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 I'm enjoying it, but I don't like the writing style. Well, that's just a me thing. Not I a think I've gotten used to it now. I yeah, I don't. I will not use to it because um, we all know the type of person I am. Yeah. Um, Translation: I'm not a fantasy girly. Yes, that's why I wanted to do this one because I was like, well, you like romance, and so there's a good chance you'll like the romance in this, and it'll just be a fantasy romance, and that could like ease you into it for that book. Um, you know, I'm trying to get you to like fantasy. I'm trying. You're trying really hard for I really am. Um, I'm trying really hard too, don't worry. <laughs> Anyways, I guess we should actually talk about the book that we're supposed to talk about for this episode. Um, I would like you to know, it took me eight days for me to read, but actually it was four days, um, because there was like one day that I read a bit, um, which is like the four chapters I read and took notes on on my iPad, and then the power outage happened, and I could only read like a certain amount of hours each day because sun. Um, and also, uh, trying to keep the house warm and do all these things around the house uh, at the same time kind of didn't leave much time for reading, so I took three the all three days. Like when the power came back on the third day, I was halfway through the last chapter. <laughs> Um, it took me 17 days to read, but I was saying with my father at the time, so I never really had time. Um, but I, listen, I started it on December 14th, 2021, and finished it December 30th, 2021. I love that for you. Um, but yes, this is Unleashed, a book that I, one, check out my vlog. I did a vlog where I read this. Um, but basically, I like this and like more than I thought I would like yes it's dumb in moments like I expected it to be but I still had a good time and like I'm contemplating upping my rating from 3.5 to 4. Do it do it bestie do it I also gave it 4 stars. Yeah I saw that when I was pulling up my highlights um but yes this book is written by I assume the pen name Bella Jacobs <laughs> um the twilight references throughout throughout this book um He's so real for that, you know? Yeah. Uh, and basically, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna I go... I want to read some of her other stuff, honestly. <laughs> I'm gonna, uh, go through the plot, because I am the most recent person to read it, therefore, took a lot of notes. Um, and if you want to hop in, go ahead. Uh, but chapter one... I, uh, I feel like I should say how I found this book, okay? So my mom bought my Kindle secondhand for one of her work friends, her old work friends, uh, because, like, I used to have a kind of blah, 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 you know, um, unnecessary stingray lore. <laughs> <laughs> but I was looking through, I was looking through, uh, a lot of the same books, and I seen this book, it was like, I'm me, I bet I take up, and I had a little pink cover, I was like, okay, um, I was like, okay, it's, uh, it didn't sound too bad, even though I've never, I had never read a shift romance, or that much romance period at this point in my life, but I was like, you know what, it's free, what's the worst that could happen? I download it, and then I read it a couple weeks later, and I'm like, you know what? <laughs> you know what? And then I read the whole trilogy. Yep. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sing Right had me read this for vlog, or Sing Right chooses three books for me to read. This is one of them. Um, I knew it was Shifter Romance and Reverse Harem, and that's about it. Um, it was not Shifter in the way that I was expected. I have read a few Shifter Romances, but nothing really like this. Like, there was the Dinosaur, or not Dinosaur, what am I talking about? The Dragon Shifter one for my birthday vlog. I but, feel like I should let you know that yeah. there's vampire in the universe. I'm sick. Anyways, um, so I, like, have read Shifter Romances, but, like, in none of them is the shifting prominent in the story. Also, the writing not only isn't bad, but it's kind of good and, like, actually goes really deep into, like, a lot of themes about how Native people are treated by the government. Um, I think a lot of it is allegory for, um, how gay people are treated, um, how people of color are treated, um, by the government, um, and stuff like that. Like, there's a good- but then there's also, like, Twilight references throughout. And, like, there's four different men that are fighting for this woman's heart, and I'm just out here being, like, a Credence girl like I am. I really need to read the second book. As you should be, you're a Credence shooter. That's so real, bestie. Credence and Luke. The way I, I forgot his name before you started calling him Luke, it's fine. 
I, at one point, going through this, um, one, I think my largest paragraphs are the two Creeps chapters, because there's only two. Pure shenanigans. Why are there only two? I think there's more than the rest. I, Don't I worry. Know. Um, but most of my 18 highlights are just his quotes from him that I find really funny, and I feel like everyone needs to enjoy them. Um, so that will be coming up. But first, we gotta start with, like, the main character, Ren. Um, she runs a shelter for teenagers. Uh, she's recently been put in charge. Right? Um, her sister is a redhead that's presumed dead, or is, like, yeah, there's, like, she thinks she died, uh, a few years ago when she was, like, a kid. Uh, I contemplated that's why she's really big into helping teens out, um, because her sister was in trouble a lot. Um, she's had some kind of relapse, uh, and I was wondering what it was, uh, but it's, like, a health relapse and can only work a few hours a week. Has a history of people leaving her, um, which include her biological parents, her dead sister, and her best friend as a child, Dust. Um, uh, that's why I initially thought that maybe Dust would be a love interest. Cough, cough. He is. <laughs> honestly, she's honestly so real. Like, Wait, too bad. Like, I was like, hey, I think these two people, the only two guys that were really talked about, which was Kite and Dust at that point, I was like, hey, I think these are a love interest. And you were like, yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I'm not gonna lie to you. There's not much to spoil. Yeah, no. I mean, kind of, because there's actually kind of a plot, you know? Yeah. Um, I instantly thought Dust was one of the shifters and one of her romantic parents. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, did I mention that this is spoiler heavy? No, I should. Um, I'm gonna go throughout the whole entire plot. Um, I think that implies for every single episode we do, okay? Yes, I, it should be, but I feel like I have to mention it just in case. Um, the relapse is, like, a virus, so basically this is, like, global warming has taken over, um, all the ice caps are melting, causing flooding, and that's causing a lot of issues, but also there are, like, some diseases, uh, frozen in the ice, and, uh, when the ice thawed, some people got some weird diseases, uh, they're called, like, meltdown diseases, um, her mom got it from a dirty needle, cause, uh, her, like, her biological mom, um, cause she was, like, a drug addict and got it from a dirty needle, and then it went to her two kids, which is her and her sister, um, Kite is a cute guy who works at a shelter that Ren has a crush on. Um, and I wrote, and I quote, possible shifter with native roots and super hearing? Hear me out. He's a shifter, and um, he's the main native character throughout this book. <laughs> he's a bear. <laughs> he's a bear. Um, so, uh, chapter two, there's basically an explanation of what the meltdown is. I already gave that. <laughs> fine whatever i'm sorry but the whole thing went right over my head i'm not gonna lie like i got most of the other stuff but that shit went right over my head it's a little weird i was like i understood i kind of got it but like i didn't really understand why it was important but i think it was just an explanation for the ship why like what this mysterious virus is that she can't be cured from i'm doing air quotes but you can't see them um Nope. When we both know, like, pretty early on, I figured it was, like, something to do with her shifter, and I'm hiding her shifter abilities or something. Um, so... Listen, I had no idea coming into this book, okay? I didn't even really... I don't know. Uh, the Church of Humanity uh, is what runs the shelter, and it requires, if a teen goes to the shelter and decides they want to stay and continue to use their resources, has to pledge into the church, which is a little suspicious. I was like, that's a little cultish. Ha ha. Um, Ren's been a member since she, since childhood, since she was adopted. Um, Ren hints at health issues and Kite gets very angry, uh, about it. I apparently have highlights about this. Let's see, what are they? Um, and I quote, things can change and they will change, Ren. I promise you, as long as there's breath in my body, you're not going to die. You've just got to be ready when the time comes. And good, keep trusting me, but bird girl. Oh yeah, he calls her bird girl all the time. And I'm going to show you a whole new world. A world where you can be the powerhouse you are on the inside. Um, why did when reading that, both now and back then, my brain go, uh, mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell? Um. Please. Um, and I was, like, pretty sure at this point that this was just hinting at Ren being shifter too. Cough, cough. I was right. Um, Ren and Kite kiss, uh, for the first time. Basically, it's, like, this whole thing where he walks her home from the shelter. Oh, walks her to the station from the shelter, um, and whatnot. And normally, like, they occasionally hug. I really like that scene, by the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it, it was a good scene. Um, but, uh, they also kiss. And, uh, this is when you also learn that he's also into her, and I have more highlights about this. Ooh. Fine. Um, 
Oh, this, she describes his scent as campfire and element. Uh, and found that very important. What is, what is that? What I is element? I don't know. Um, Hold on, let me go. How did you spell it? <laughs> uh, and then finally I have to pull away, coming up for air. I was okay. The gas <laughs> that makes Kite rumble a soft, sorry, didn't mean to suffocate you. Biting my lip as I point. The toes still dangling off the sidewalk. I tighten my grip on his shoulders. I don't mind. Air is overrated. Ren fantasizes about men from romance books who will do anything to protect the heroine. And then I wrote foreshadowing. Spoilers? Yes. <laughs> um, Kite has large... La the, what? <laughs> what did I just try to say? Kite has large hands. And then I wrote, I wonder what they'll be used for. I think we all know what they'll be used for. Um, They're used pretty early on in the book, let's be real. Um, Ren not uh, only is a virgin, and I, uh, in parentheses, because of course, she's also never been properly kissed before, so this is like her first real kiss. Um, yeah. Uh, and it's hinted that the kiss made Ren stronger, like she feels stronger physically, um, which is like weird because the way that her... What the hell are you sending? <laughs> <laughs> Why do I want the ten harsh realities of rereading the Twilight Saga instead of the six brilliant young adult science fiction books? I can't get to read it. You can see who I am and I didn't read it. Like I saw it, but I didn't comprehend it. I just saw a lot of girls and said, "What the fuck is that?" I don't know. <laughs> you really fully understand what our chats are like now, fam. Um, um, basically, the way her disease works is that uh, it tires her out very easily. Um, if you have chronic pain or illness, you probably get how it works. Um, basically, she easily gets tired out. Um, and then for the rest of the day, she basically can't do anything. Usually, when she gets home from uh, work at the shelter, uh, her mom makes her dinner. A lot of the times, the medication she's on does makes her really nauseous, so she doesn't really eat much. Um, and then she goes takes goes to bed um, and just reads for hours if she can, uh, because she can't she's really so move. Real, you know? uh, and then Sorry, in the so morning, girl, she does so real. <laughs> and then when she wakes up in the morning, um, she has to take her meds. Like she has to wake up super early to take her meds, so that like within the next hour she can actually be able to stand and take a shower. Like, that's how it's described, right? Um, not a good time. Which, like, the only thing that we know about the stuff that happens in this book, you know, um, chapter three, the you learn, uh, in chapter three you learn that the sister lashed out about the illness, uh, with drugs. Kind of makes sense. Uh, and then when she was at a treatment facility, it burned down, uh, and they never recovered her body. And I, this is when I first really thought that maybe the sister was still alive. Like, I contemplated it in the very beginning, but, like, I started to th really think at this point. Yeah. Um, uh, I thought maybe she had caused fire, and maybe, uh, it's related to shifter stuff. Um, and then she, right over here is a part of a conversation between her adoptive parents being outside, uh, being hopeful over a possible treatment they learned about over the phone. Um, chapter four is mostly about this treatment stuff, uh. So, it's a new experimental treatment by a leading stu scientist studying meltdown disease. It seemed to fully put four kids in remission, uh, and he's found space to add Ren, but the older you are, the higher the risk of dying, like 30% chance in teens, and uh, that's the oldest he's done so far. Ren will be the oldest so far. I think she's in like her mid-20s. Um, also, I wrote down the doctor's name is Highborn, and I'm suspicious. The way I was so right so early on. Why Why was his name suspicious? <laughs> Listen, the name Highborn, the way that this book has a lot of foreshadowing, or not foreshadowing, um, allegory and metaphor for, like, lower people in society being, what she would as lower people in society being treated by other people. Oh, yeah, yeah, Highborn, I get it. Yeah, I got and it. I was like, I'm suspicious. Yeah. Um, I caught on early. I got um, it. Ren has a weird vision. Think, of, you're the one with the the the, 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 the fuck. You're the one with the degree here, so obviously I'm the one who needs to explain it to. Yeah. So. I'm the one that like went to school and actually learned about um 
deciphering things in literature and stuff. You know, fun things. Um, so right one one of us one after learning about this treatment, um, and she's not sure if she wants to do it or not, because, like, very high chance of dying, what? Um, but also, like, if she doesn't get the treatment, she's gonna die from the disease soon anyways. Uh, she goes to, I think she low-key agrees to it and goes to call her best friend. I think it, her name's Kellyanne. Um, but when she goes upstairs, uh, she sees this picture of Raccoon that her sister made. Uh, she basically has what used to be her sister's room, and it's kind of like the only thing still there from her sister. Uh, is this painting of, I don't, I, did I say raccoon? It's a, it is a fox, a fox, not a raccoon. Um, anyway, she goes to touch it, and she has a weird vision of her past. Uh, That's in the okay. vision, uh, due to the vision, we learned that Ren has blocked out most of her pre-adoptive childhood. Uh, it's assumed out of trauma via therapist. Um, her and her sister were rescued from a drug den where their mom sold her body for drugs and it's been insinuated by a therapist that their mother also sold them and that's why she's blocked everything. I love how they... The things that we know later on in the book about how this is all false and so therefore multiple people including her adoptive parents decided to tell her the story about her biological family to make her dislike her family. And so many therapists as well. Like, so many layers, okay? Um... Okay, but through the whole book, her parents are played off like they don't know as much as everybody else was, but I think they knew everything the whole time. Yeah, no, I would, I would not have trusted them as fast as she does near the end. Um, in the vision, her mom says, and I quote, it's not safe to fly so young. Um, I thought I was thinking more shifter stuff. Um, and then this is what I question, is this disease actually her shifter genetics and the drugs doctors give her to keep it are actually what are killing her? Uh, that's why most eyes, teens... And she went into remission after puberty. The way I was so right. The way I was so fucking right. <laughs> um, the vision ends with Vasha's including gunshots hinting at the shifters being hunted and red fur on a full moon hinting at her sister being a shifter too. Right? Um, normally her memories are just static, so it's a little weird that she got all these flashes and whatnot. Um, Vision is ended when a mysterious phone call of someone telling her to help herself by opening her window and suddenly hanging up. Um, it's explained that she picks up from an unknown num no number. Uh, oh yeah, I like this, because, like, why would you answer the phone when it's just a random unknown number, right? Um, but she does it in case it's one of the shelter kids who may have found his phone, um, maybe on the streets in front of the phone, uh, maybe has a contraband phone on them or something and needs to call her for emergency, so that's why she picks up the phone. I did like that piece of detail, because I was like, why did she answer the freaking phone? Right? Um, yeah, I wouldn't answer the phone, so, you know. Ren is reminded of Dust and uh, the lucky coin he gave her, which is actually real gold. Um, she remembers one of their classmates seeing a child-sized body bag leave Dust's house be days before his apparent return to England, because um, he's British. Um... And it's possibly... I forget he's British, oh my god. I forget it, like, every time. I, every once in a while, I just forget. And I would imagine every time he's fighting with Kite, that he's just yelling in British English <laughs> accent. And it was... It just made it so much better. Um, it's a possibility the body bag uh, what, had dust in it, since all the kids in the school that they went to were sick kids from the church, right? Um, She has tried to find him, uh, but he has no online presence, and someone scrubbed him from the church's database, despite his adoptive parents still being on the list. Um, only people who are openly against the church are erased, so, so she assumes that's why, uh, he's not on the list and has stopped looking for him. Um, recognized, she recognized the voice on the phone from when she was a kid, and her sister got a similar call saying to grab, uh, Ren, and run because their adoptive parents weren't who they seemed to be, and if they stayed, they would die, but then her memory, like, flash ends, right? Um, she recognizes some scratching at her window, uh, that the voice on the phone told her to open, so she looks out, and there's a raccoon tapping on the glass with a very human hand. Uh, I need everyone to know a very important lore right now. Mm-hmm. She... I can't remember if it's her or some somebody. I'm pretty sure it's her, though. If things worked out differently, she also had a mark. Therefore, she could have been a mate. Mm hmm Which... Wait, what? Because she's the raccoon is gay! She is gay! She has a girlfriend! We laughed so hard! Thank you. Okay. Anyways, continue. Um... So it has a 
weird looking hand. Uh, her mom calls her down to dinner. Um, so, like, she looks away a little bit. Um, and the raccoon holds up a piece of paper that says, uh, in all red caps, run, Ren. Um, and that's where I stopped reading that day. raccoon's holding up a note to your window. <laughs> that's where my notes end for that first day. Um, and I stopped reading for, like, multiple days. And then the power outage happened. And I didn't have any books downloaded on my, uh, not my iPad, my Kindle. And I was like, well, might as well read this for the vlog slash podcast and took notes. So we're on to physical notes, fam. Um, chapter five, the raccoon leaves. Uh, she goes to grab the note it left and notices the screen on her window is gone. Uh, and then notices there's more rain on the note. Uh, I have a highlight about it, apparently. Uh, oh yes, uh, this is what the note says. Uh, don't take your medication after dinner. Watch this window and be ready to run when you see the sign. Let us help you run before it's too late. You can trust us. We'll explain everything as soon as you're free. On the chance that this note is discovered, we can't say more, but be assured that luck is on your side and in your pocket tonight. Uh, obviously the pocket comment is, uh, a hint to the coin that she keeps in her pocket from dust at all times. Um, uh, She's never told anyone about that coin, uh, so, like, she finds it a little weird that's mentioned, Loki hinted at in the note, uh, since it's, like, it's, like, obviously a hint from dust to her to be, like, hey, it's me. Um, but she plans to tell her bestie Carrie Ann, but then thinks this is all some kind of cult rescue mission, uh, and so she plans to, like, tell them, hey, I'm fine, this isn't an actual cult, please. Um, because there's, like, some people on, like, social media and whatnot who are, like, hey, Kind of a little uh, cultish, you guys. Um, she stayed in the church. I know who you are, um, She stayed in the church out of community, even if she doesn't follow some of the practices. Um, and then there's some like good commentary on how like the internet is bad for developing minds. Like that's why they um, make it so you can't like use the internet for your childhood and whatnot, right? Um, yeah, that's why they banned it. Uh, but then half a page later, you learn it's banned until you're 30. Which, I'm sorry, what? Um, I was like, that's a tad suspicious. Uh, and then I was like, it's giving culty vibes, especially with the, quote, loving fellow humanity stuff. Um, she finally realizes it has something to do with lust, or lust, dust. What am I saying? Um, she fakes taking her meds and wanting to see if it's dust. Um, but then it starts to make her loopy. She goes to reread the note to, like, make sure she read it properly and all this stuff. Um, she hid it, like, pretty well in her sock drawer and whatnot. But it's missing, uh, prompting her to believe someone's been in her room and may still be there. And then the chapter ends with someone grabbing her from behind. Um, the person from behind is Kite. <laughs> uh, mentions her detoxing and how they put her on a ton of meds, um, and that she's detoxing from, so it's gonna take a bit. Um... And then she collapses and he catches her, uh, his cohort kidnap her and she finally realizes how bad this could get, um, uh, and I mean, like, in ways that Tallulah and Dino Stud did not realize, and, like, these people could harm her in multiple ways, um, she's a young woman who's gonna die anyways, uh, like, they can do anything to her, all this stuff. Um, she's like, I think Kai's a good guy, but I don't know for sure, and I don't know about his, like, cohorts or any of this stuff, right? Um, at one point, uh, oh, so they somehow also turned off her dad's, like, super OP security system because they have had break-ins before, and it's, like, a b bad part of town. Um, so, like, they have pretty good security. Um, she manages to escape, uh, but when crawling home, she knows uh, Kai's accomplice is female, who calls her mama and says she'll be safe. Um, and then picks her up, uh, over her shoulder. Oh, um, sorry, she called me mama, with this. <laughs> Um, but in the process of, like, running away, like, her shoulder's hitting into her rib cage, and so she's getting kind of beat up in the process. Um, not the phone ringing downstairs, I'm just gonna ignore it. Apparently they can't explain the situation as they're driving out of the city, I don't know why. She's like, hey, explain what's happening, and they're just like, we will later, and then continue to drive. I'm like, guys, <laughs> guys. Um, she's trying to think of escape plans in her head, but then she blacks out again, right? Um. Bren comes to, oh, this is, this is the chapter where it's her basically constantly blacking out and waking up. Uh, so she comes to, and they're in the middle of a car chase, uh, she blacks out again, uh, when they end up swerving and her shoulder gets injured, uh, against a door. Somehow she does not have lasting effects of any of these injuries after this. Um, she comes again to, uh, the woman who she calls Spikey, yelling on the phone to someone named Ghost, 
uh, saying they're trapped and they have to get them out. Um, and then they're quote unquote hung up on. I gotta remove my paper clip so I can turn the page. This is very important. Um, so my th thoughts about this is, uh, make me, I believe that Spiky slash Sierra, that's her actual name, was the raccoon and, uh, yeah, that's kind of like a thing. Why? What is going on with the phone downstairs? Um, kin is a term for shifters. That's kind of important for later on. Uh, she passes out before they drive off the bridge. Uh, and wakes up falling and then passes out again. Uh, wakes up in the water. Kite says he has her but drops her. Uh, he becomes what she views as a water monster and she's on his back when a wolf howls above them. She passes out again. Uh, wakes up in the arms of the water creature, which she thinks is a bear, and it pets her hair, comforting her. At this point, she doesn't know for sure that it's Kite, but, like, we, we as the readers know. Um, she sends the wolf, and people chasing them want them dead and will torture her first. Um, and she believes the bear is her protector. Next chapter. Uh, she wakes up alone in the morning and assumes Kite and Sierra did it, uh, or died. Why did I? I forgot a letter there. Um, she has issues with balancing her feelings about Kite. Uh, like him, but, like, he kidnapped her, and, like, what if he's dead, all that stuff. Uh, she starts to hike to find her way home, making note of her surroundings. Um, the lack of meds make the hike easier than expected. Um, but also she has a lack of nausea, which makes her, uh, unchar uncharacteristically hungry. Like, she's really, really hungry. She's like, oh, come on. Um, Kite comes up behind her with some forced food, only wearing a, uh, and I quote, leaf loin cloth. <coughs> um, she ogles him for a bit, people recognizing he's probably insane, because he kidnapped her. You know, we love how she's smarter than the heroine in, um, in, in Dino Stud, yeah. and, um, she had a PhD, or she okay, was a PhD. Can we, can we take a moment and talk about how many times, uh, Kite I don't want to say the word. <laughs> Why did they talk about it so much? His, I don't want to say the word. You know what I'm trying to say here. Are you trying to say that about on time he gets a boner? No. <laughs> they talk about his hairy balls a lot, okay? Oh, they it's do, like yeah. hairy ball. I, I think there's a highlight about that actually at one point. Like, why are they, even, even in the second and third one, they talk about them so much. Like, I'm stressed. Why was that necessary? Like, I um, understand he's like, I don't know, I'm stressed. <laughs> uh, so, Kite starts to explain some stuff. Uh, basically, the people chasing them were KB, which is a uh, code for Kinborn, um, aka Shifters. Um, the church hates all shifters, that's kind of a thing. Um, basically, the Kinborn, I don't know when this is noted, but I'll just mention it now. Kinborn basically are shifters that are naturally born shifters, and they hate shifters that are either made, like, in your typical werewolf fight type of fashion, or in your, um, made in the lab kind. So, they want to kill all those, and also any other shifters that try to help them. Uh... And the church just hate all know. shifters and want to kill all shifters. So they're being chased by two groups of people. They're being chased by the humans who are the church, and they're being chased by the shifters who are the kinborn. Right? Um, people start to answer questions like, I'll be clothes when survived a shift. Oh yeah, she like asks him where his clothes are. And he's like, obviously, my clothes when survived a shift. Like, she knows what a shift is. So like, that started to annoy me, right? Um, she blames Sierra's possible death on herself, but Kite says otherwise and visibly wants to comfort her, um, but she won't let him get closer anymore, you know, because, like, he can after. Um, they make a deal that if she eats the bugs, oh, yeah, he offers her, um, the, the food he offers her is cockroaches, I believe. Um, and so Ew. they make a deal that if she eats them, then he'll start explaining as they walk to try and find Sierra's stream. She's um, than me, for real. She does, she does eat some, um, I'm gonna turn on my lights so I can actually see. <laughs> um, so, next chapter is Kite's POV. All this beforehand was Ren's POV, uh, and this is the first time someone else's, um, which is Kite's. Uh, we learn, uh, Ren is from one of the, uh, main OG bloodlines. Uh, the meds have been to suppress her shifting, and she will have side effects from the drugs for the rest of her life. 
Uh, see, highlight seven. On it, me. Uh, oh, I didn't say to read that one. That's just a random highlight I like. That's why. Um, so the stuff about the side effects include, uh, she might never be able to shift without pain, might never escape the chronic fatigue that plagues so many former captors, or she might lose her fucking mind. Um, so, you know, fun side effects. Um, real. Fuzzy snuggling will speed up her healing, and he'll be happy to be that fuzzy in something he mentions. Um, and then another highlight, um, I'm gone on this girl, completely gone, crushing so hard that the fear in her eyes last night and the suspicion in them this morning are a knife stabbing into my chest. Um, He's so real. He doesn't want to say too much too fast in fear of scaring her away uh, for good or a way to separate all the exposition. Isn't my dough. I'm like, or, or we want to separate all the exposition, right? Um, he also wants to kiss her again uh, someday, maybe. Uh, imagine... Oh, yeah, and then I wrote down, imagine telling someone who's chronically ill that they're not sick. Because he's literally like, you're not sick, Red. And she's like, what the fuck are you talking And I'm like, imagine in real life, you just go up to someone who's chronically ill and go, you're not actually sick. You're real. I would, in fact, hurt somebody if someone looks at me that isn't trying to tell me that. I know, right? at this point. Um, so basically, the church believes shifters are the mark of the devil. Um... And so, basically, they give them drugs to, or and experiment on them to suppress their shifterness, DNA, whatnot stuff. Um, because they believe when you shift, uh, you become closer to sin and the devil. And the more you shift, the more you become closer to the devil uh, and closer to demons, right? Um, seems a little culty slash, well, there's also this whole thing where, like, religion is a cult in general. But, yeah, um... He she gets upset when he yells that her adoptive parents are monsters. Uh and then this is when I first got thoughts that the shifting is an analogy for gay kids whose parents send them to um conversion therapy and conversion camps, you know. Um Yeah, we're so cool, Michael, Because every time you bring that up, I'm like, Oh my god. So like you know. Yeah, no, it's a lot of like sending your kids to like get fixed and all this stuff and I was like and like how you're born this way. There's nothing you can change like, is just be proud of the way that you are, but, like, then there's, like, this church who, like, tries to change you and forces you to do stuff so that you are no longer this way. And I was, like, very much getting gay kids Hear in conversion out. camps and therapy, yeah. Hear me out. Why is that obviously a very obvious thing to, like, be able to, you know? There's only one gay character, and she gets got. Yeah. Um... He yeah, is real gay guy. Like, he really Um, he tells her she's not average and starts listing, listing off all the ways he finds her special. Um, uh, this is when I first thought that Dust may have actually known something about all this shift herself when they were kids, and that's why he went quote-unquote missing. Um, she mentions her bear quote-unquote dream, and he asks her how it made her feel. We obviously know that he's the bear. Um, so he's asking how him as a bear made her feel um and she said it made her feel safe um it's hinted that she'll be the one to end all the bloodshed uh he thinks she's about to kiss him and then highlight nine. Oh, this is a good one um and i quote this is a long one too my leaf flowing cloth covers the subject now but a friend's kiss starts doing what it did to me yesterday i'll soon be pitching a massive leaf tent and when the leaf tent goes up, the berries are going to end up dangling in the breeze for all of the world. And this girl, I would really prefer not to be introduced to my walls this early in our relationship to see. I do not have attractive balls. Do any guys have attractive balls? Is Ryan experienced enough to realize that my balls are merely equally ugly to all other balls and not uniquely hideous monstrosities that should never be allowed to dangle free in the forest or anywhere else? Yeah, that's... that's perfectly explains what I was talking about earlier. Yeah. Don't worry. There's more. There's more than just that one, too. There's so many different scenes where they talk about it. I'm like, what's the reason? What's the reason? What's the reason? Why is she so crazy? You know what? I found it kind of funny, though, so I'll give them that. Um, it is funny, but, like, still, I'm stressed. I mean, yeah. Um, so they're about to kiss, and then a chapter 
chop what a chopper helicopter is going overhead um his kinborn gift is empathy so he can feel what others are feeling um according to ghost her gift is to, is to use others first by physical touch and then mental with an established bond we later later on what that means um but this is why when like they were being chased by the kb earlier um she knew she like could sense that they want to harbor because she was on his back and he so she was touching him, and so she was able to use his empathy power to tell that they wanted to harm her, right? Um, he's happy to be close to her, and she says he's crazy for thinking Smexy thoughts in their situation. They're basically, like, in a river so that, uh, their heat signatures are hidden. Um, so they're in this freezing cold river, uh, basically on top of each other, and he's, like, she can sense that he's feeling Smexy thoughts, which means he's probably got a boner. Um, uh, and, and she's like, sir, please. Sir, please. Um, and then, uh, we got, I laugh because sometime a man just has to cop to being a man. A less than logical creature ruled as much by what's between his legs as what's between his ears. Thank you. Thank you so much, Kite, for that. Um, he gives her a piggyback ride. Um, is this just a thing now? Throughout, like, these weird romance books I'm reading? Or is it just the Twilight vibes, right? <laughs> That's my note. Um, chapter 10, we're back to Ren. Uh, Kite goes to get supplies, and she goes to a phone box to call her parents when a British guy interrupts her. Um, I wrote, it's totally just Q Doctor Who reference, uh, also because phone box. Um, and then, oh my god, it's Ghost, who is actually, aka, Dust. Who could have guessed? Um, when Kite sees Ren and Dust talking, because, like, they're childhood friends, they have some things to get up on, he gets really protective. Uh, the boys fight, Dust claims he disconnected not hung up uh when they were on the bridge and they were like asking for help and stuff uh she asked for answers and thus says they can wait when she's about to complain they get shot at um she gets fired she like gets hit a few times um this is where i question where are all her wounds from like getting her shoulder and ribs whacked around when they were kidnapping her when um also the fact that she almost drowned but you know that's fine um kite is firing back dust being a uh, body shield and she internally complains she's going to die of version also there's like a lot of stuff this is like kind of my main complaint throughout this book um which is like she's very much on a wave field that's like um love not fight like love not war and so she's all like, oh, the way that Kite, this really nice guy, is forced to shoot these people, but violence brings more violence, so what, what would happen if we stopped fighting? But then we'd probably just all get shot. And that's, like, a thing that happens in every fight scene. Um, and it kind of gets annoying very easy. Um, she, yeah, uh, she just wants peace. They make an escape plan, and Ren passes out from her wounds, because she's got shot a few times. Yay! Chapter 11, because she's passed out. Dust. Good times. Um... He compares her to Snow White. Oh, I got another highlight for you. Uh, there was only one bright spot. The girl with the big blue eyes and jack black hair. The girl with the skin as white as snow and lips as red as blood. Just like Snow White. Until I met Ren, I'd assume I was a sleeping beauty kind of guy. All that long blonde hair d did something for me, even as a child. But Ren changed to all that. So, um, you know, he's kind of real for that. Also, <laughs> met your side, so. But, like, he's, he's kind of real for that, you know? Like, does... I, I honestly love the way Dust kind of talks about her, even though it is a little bit weird at the same time, because they haven't seen each other in literal years, you I, know? I can go into, like, when we bring in the other love interests, I can go into how I feel about all the love interests, basically, uh, basic version, oh my god, I just glimpsed at what the next highlight is, it's a Credence one. Anyways, Credence, great, um, I will go into psychology of Credence if you want me to, I will do it. I don't care Please. that we're almost an hour into this, I will go into it. Luke isn't a, really a character in this one. I assume he's going to be more of a character in the later books, but he's barely even there. I forgot he was there half the time. Um, listen, listen. Kite was kind of boring to me, and I kind of wanted her best friend, Kellyanne, to actually have the mark and her to be able to be a love interest instead of Kite, because I was like, that'd be better. And then, <laughs> and then, um, Dust, I'm not really into, like, the childhood crush, like, turned into, uh, lovers later on type thing i'm not really into that but like whatever i didn't really care one way or another for him um but yes i'm a credence girly okay personally personally hear me out i really liked kite at the beginning but you're right he he just he's really safe and like low-key boring like there's just something about him i didn't like at the end i don't know and like dust i like kind of like but i like him as a character or just not as a love interest very much so like 
I think it's like kite dust, credence Luke, depending on the day, credence and Luke switch, you know? Um, but like do what you will with this information, but like Luke Listen. Listen. Like I listen. But like also like just I anyways, listen. <laughs> Like, I get the point of Kite's character being the safe option because, like, this is going to be the first time she's with someone. Her first real relationship, all this stuff. So, like, you want someone safe and someone you know for that, right? So, like, I get it. But, like, you know, maybe I want a little bit of the bad boy who flirts with me all the time and just randomly makes out with me at a dance party. You know, like, read it. Anyway, spoilers. Real. Later on in this book. Um, where was I in this? Oh, um. So, Dustin initially liked Kite beforehand. Like, there was a lot of them arguing in the previous chapter. I did not go over much, much like, barely any of it. Um, and she was, like, in the middle there, like, guys, stop. Uh, so, he, before all this, actually liked Kite, but doesn't like uh, how close he got to Ren while undercover. Which, like, makes sense. If you're undercover, you should not, like, date your target, right? That's a little weird. Um, he ran the security detail the day they kissed, so saw it happen. Um, which I understand from his, like, that's kind of a shitty thing to feel, like, you see this girl that you've had a crush on since childhood that you had to leave behind because of all this supernatural stuff, but now you'll get to save her life and bring her back into the fold and be with her, maybe, and all this stuff, and then this random guy that you sent undercover to keep her safe starts making out with her and you have to watch it happen, like, yeah, um, I get it. Um, he hints at her having to choose a mate, but having the option to choose multiple, Reverse harem. Um, they need a wolf to win an upcoming fight. Uh, and then this is where I wrote Credence and Luke, the wolf part of the four. Yes. Uh, Credence is a cat shifter who ca can see visions of the future. And I wrote, so Alice from Twilight, which makes sense for me because Alice was my favorite Cullen and Credence is my favorite of the four boys in this. It all comes full circle. Um, and so the four boys, Shifter, I don't know, mates in this are uh, Credence, who is a cat, he's a lynx, um, Luke, who is the unwilling volunteer, uh, who's the wolf, Dust, we don't know at this point, they don't mention it until pretty far into this book, that he's a griffin, and it's like just dropped in there and then moved on from, and I was like, it felt like it was supposed to be earlier on in the book that it was mentioned, but they just cut it out to like save space, and you know, it's sad to me, because I was like, what the fuck? And then it just moved on. And then Kite, of course, Real, was Real, because, like, that's crazy. Like, everyone else is normal, and he's a fucking griffin? What the fuck? Yeah, you've got, like, a cat, a bear, a wolf, a griffin. Also, you learned that she could possibly turn into a dragon at one point. I was like, let's go, I'm ready. <laughs> I want it, I want it. Um, so, the next chapter is Ren when she's... No, wait, she's still in her dreams after Post being shot. Um, she has a weird dream, uh, that may be a prophecy, I think it's a prophecy thing, uh, but then later on it's, like, actually believed that it's some kind of prophecy, or him actually, the bad guy actually being in her dreams, um, but it may be a prophecy because, uh, Credence was over her, uh, when she wakes up, and so may have been touching her, and since he can see visions of the future, that may be a thing. Um, he's more nonchalant about the possible mate thing, uh, he calls her the chosen one, and Kate tells her to, sh tells him to shut up, because they're both just sitting there in the room while she's sleeping. Um, and then Credence tells her not to take, uh, anyone else's shit. And then they banter about Buffy, uh, which, another reason why I love Credence, he just starts going off, and she, he's like, I think he mentioned seven seasons, and she's like, there's another season. And he's like, yeah, I ignore that one, because that one's crap. We ignore that one exists. And I'm like, me. That is such me with Game of Thrones. I did not get very far into Buffy, but that's such me with Game of Thrones. Uh, Credence and Kite, kind of get along, but they pick on each other. It's giving me, like, brotherly fighting type vibes. Are those cute puppies, I see? Um, she's been asleep for two days, and they all go out to the deck to meet with Dust. Um, and Credence is like, we don't have to do, like, what you don't want to do. Like, if you don't want to do something, we don't have to do it. And all this stuff. And she's like, nah, I'm gonna choose my battles. Um, so, that's the thing. Um, next chapter is still Ren. Uh, stuff about the Kinborn that I've already explained. Uh, they really want to kill Kite because he, like, helps out a lot of shifters, and so they really want to kill Kite because of that. Uh, the treatment she was gonna do, 
alters the DNA, so a shifter can no longer turn, and actually 70% die, is it like the estimated possibility. Um, therefore, they call him Dr. Death, instead of Dr. Highborn. Um, they had to move up the timeline due to the appointment. With all the street kids they think he experiments on, the death rate may actually be close to 90%. Basically, he takes street kids, he, like, gives them food so they trust him, and then he takes them and experiments on them. And so, um, they probably die, right? Um, he tests treatments on these kids and only does the ones that work on church members, hence why his show numbers are wrong, um, in, like, in his, I don't know, in his pamphlet? <laughs> I don't know. Um... She's okay with accepting a version of everything that they've said at this point, except the shifting. Uh, I don't know why the boys, next chapter, but the boys, um, banter, uh, kind of remind me of Fruits Basket. I don't know if you've ever read that manga or watched that anime. Kind of reminded me of that. Um, especially with the, like, cat personality. Of, of what? Fruits Basket. It's a manga oh, where- Oh, I've never, I like this. I've never- I've never read or watched it. I watched the original. I think they did a remake. And then I watched half of that. And I read like half the series. Um, so they decided to prove the shifting is real. Uh, so Kite was originally going to do the shifting. But he's shifted a lot in the past few days. So they got to like save up his energy. Um, Luke is like locked up. She doesn't even know about Luke yet. Um, and Dust says he's way too big to do it in this small of an area. Which, like, the first hint that he's, like, big, but, like, nothing like he's a freaking griffin. Um, so it's Gris, Grif, Grifin, Grifin, that will show her. Um, also, Kai's also wounded, so, like, also that's the reason why he shouldn't shift. Um, so Creedon starts stripping down, because, like, it makes you, you, you lose your clothes. Like, you would tear apart your clothes, so, like, he strips out, he wants to save his clothes. Um, and becomes a lynx. Uh, there's, like, this whole scene where she's, like, trying not to look, but, like, decides to look anyways, um, and he's just, like, being cheeky about it, and I'm just like, Credence, I like you. Um, this is when I first noticed that Credence is my favorite at this point, um, and it stayed that way the whole damn time, and I'm only in chapter 14. He's been in two th or three chapters so far, that is it. Um, after accepting that, holy shit, shifters are real, um, she asks what she is, and they obviously lie, telling her they don't know. Uh, and she's about to, like, write them about that. When uh, Luke, the wolf, starts howling, and she gets upset because they locked up a man in the basement. That's, like, right? Yeah, that makes sense why she would get upset about that. Um, uh, so, basically, Dust abilities uh, that, like, every shepherd has an added ability in his is to be able to show and hide things. So he can, like, I, I was picturing Wonder Woman with the invisible... Uh, invisibility plane, right, that she has. Um, when he turned the car invisible earlier, that, that was what it was reminding me of. But, um, he also shows her, like, visions of what is going on and stuff. Um, so it's a ton of lore in this section, so be prepared. I should drink some coffee to wet my pipes. You talk for five seconds while I do this. Why'd you say it like that? But I would also like you to know I'm having a very good time right now. And, like, you know, credence supremacy. Yes. <laughs> uh, I want to read the next book so bad. I gotta find time to schedule. Right now? Do it right now, a seat right now. No, I gotta read a soul to keep. Respectfully, fuck a soul to keep. <laughs> <laughs> but I like it. Um... So, yeah, we learn the term Feta Morgana. Um, it's called Feta for short from this point on. It was given me, the name kind of reminds me of um, Morgana as in Octorian Morgana. That's just my dumbass brain being my dumbass brain. Um, but Feta Morganas are people who can shift into multiple animals and elements. Um, I wrote Ren question mark. Yeah, she's one. Um, Atlas was the first one. Basically, his mother was a shifter um, and she had kids with a human. And so she prayed to the gods to make her son also a shifter. And, uh, so he became super powerful. Um, and so her mother, his, or his, his mother was like, hey, uh, I can't, like, teach you how to shift and all this stuff, uh, especially since, like, people will hunt you down and try to kill you. Like, she was, like, a famous warrior and all this stuff, but now, like, she's being hunted down. So he, she takes him to a priestess, like, lady to basically adopt him and raise him and teach him how to shift and all this stuff, right? And then he eventually, like, kills her. He just chokes her out and kills her. Um... But he's the first one ever, um, and he craves power. Uh, 
Oh, also, after he murders his adoptive mother, uh, because, like, she's powerful in the community and whatnot, he takes her skin and wears it and pretends to be her. Fun times. Um, he mates with four women, one of each of the shifter types, right? Um, it seems very much, um, against their will. Uh, and then he kills off all the other Fata Morganas, um, learns to get more powerful. He needs to eat his wives eventually. He, like, starts killing off and, uh, destroying, like, all these people who can see visions of the future and whatnot, uh, until he finds one who eventually tells him what he wants to know, which is basically if he eats a mate, he will become even more powerful. So he, he he eats his wives, and then gets more wives, and then eats them, continuously. Um, but each time he does this, humanity declines, and so does the state of the world, hence why, like, the floods, and the meltdowns, and all this stuff. Um, the only thing that can defeat him is another Fata Morgana. Uh, and then, uh, like, it shows, like, who the next Fata Morgana, who can, like, defeat him is, and out of the shadows cup is a woman, and with four men following her, attached to her with glowing vine things. It's kind of giving me uh, Death Stranding with the goopy black goop vines, right? Um, and the, the woman steps out of the shadows, and it's her. Dun, dun, dun! Next chapter, Credence. It's Credence time! Credence time! Hell yeah! I gotta take off my sweater because it's Credence time, and I'm a little oh warm. Oh my god. Oh, I'm stripping for Credence. <laughs> I'm keeping that line, and that, that's... I mean, there's no way you ha there's no way you can cut that out. I I'm sick. Anyways, um, so at this point, Credence is back to human form when she comes out of the vision. Um, so he gives her the nickname Slim because she's really skinny from not being able to properly eat because the nausea from the medication, right? Um, so he does not like the way that Kite and Dust treat her. Uh, and it really chaps his ass. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Uh, that made me laugh. Um, but basically, he doesn't like how they're, like, both vying for her attention, but also, like, not really, um, appreciating her views on things. Like, she says she wants to do something, and they're like, mm, maybe. And he's like, one, she has a choice and willingness to make her own choices. Like, let her make her own goddamn choices already, boys. But also, like, she's supposed to be the leader, let her lead, and all this stuff. Um... He moved on from his past. I think he was like a con man in the past. And prefers to make love, not war. I love this man. Um, somehow, he was a con man, but also he's so real. Uh, you learn that somehow Ren is alive despite Atlas killing off the all the Phantom Organas that are born. Um, and I was like, hey, is this because the church gave her all those drugs? So it was hiding her shifterness? Um, and that's why? And yes, to later on confirm that's how. Um, she was able to live this long. Next, uh, chapter, oh my god, uh, or not chapter, highlight. I love this highlight. Um, this is full credence brain. Ready? Atlas and his shitty reign of unchecked evil will send this entire planet straight to hell, and every man, woman, child, shifter, animal, fruit, veggie, and spore will be destroyed in the flames. Except maybe the spores, dot, dot, dot. Spores are some hardy motherfuckers. In my next life, I'm coming back as a spore. I love what, him. I love him. <laughs> I love how we said that at the same time, too. I know things about spores that you don't know about spores. Oh, no. <laughs> no I don't care so much. much that you don't know. Um, Ren is unsure about her destiny and if she's, like, could actually be this powerful woman who destroys his things. I could also go into this whole entire debate about, or not even date, debate. I started analyzing the covers of these books. Right? Okay, so, like, if you look at the covers, I'm just gonna go off tangent right now. Um, in the first one, she's, like, wearing, like, almost, like, a prom dress type thing. Uh, she's, like, still girly, like, her old life is still there. Um, right? Second book, she's, like, wearing this leather biker chick outfit almost, like, thing. Um, she's, like, wearing leather boots and all this stuff. And it's, like, more of, like, hey, she's gotten stronger and, uh, will to survive and stuff. And then in the, in the third one, she's, like, wearing this sexy pink dress, so it's, like, she still has some of her old self in there. But, like, she's this new woman who's, like, powerful and strong and will, like, burn you down but look hot while doing it. Yeah, that's a whole tension that went on in my brain at one point. Um, have fun with that knowledge. Uh, where was I? Alright, yes. Um, Kite and Dust show her the starbirth marks that mark them as her mate. 
uh, he he would show her his, but it's on his butt. I wouldn't mind seeing it. Um. Oh yeah, and then I have a. No, the fact is on his butt is so funny. I forgot about that. <laughs> I have another quote that my note for it is uh, proof he's the best. Um, and I quote: "My future, my life, my destiny no longer belong to me. Nothing belongs to me. But when I can make people laugh, bring them out of the dark and into the light for even a second, I don't feel like a piece of shit. I feel powerful, useful, like I have a worth beyond serving a cannon fodder for a doomed cause." And this is where I could go into the psychology of this man. <laughs> Anyways, yes, please go into the psychology of this so man. Like, I love him. So, like, when you get glimpses of his childhood and stuff where he's never felt real love or any of this stuff. Um, So he doesn't feel like he's worthy of being alive sometimes um, and whatnot. He's had that in his past and whatnot. Um, and he's, like, moved on from his past, but, like, sometimes it comes up on him where he, like, doesn't feel worthy and whatnot. Um, and then he's, like, thrown into this battle against his will, kind of, almost, and... He's basically cane fodder, um, and has to try to help some random woman. But like, throughout all of this, he does what he knows best how to help people, which is to make them laugh and give them like a moment of peace that isn't like, holy shit, the world is ending. And so, it's just him trying his hardest to be there for people in the only way he knows how. And I love this man. <laughs> Why am I in love with this fictional man who's a cat? Because he's so real. Like, I, I, he's just created. Like, he gets even better in the next two, and I just. Uh -huh, don't tell me that. I already want to read them. I gotta make time for them now. Mom. You really, really, really should. I, um, I think I gave the second and third one five stars. I think so. Um, Ren is unsure about her destiny. Oh, wait, I already talked about this. Ignore that. He was initially angry with the whole ordeal, like being forced to be a uh, mate to this random woman, uh, and also having to go fight the end of the world and stuff, until he saw her. Um, and then so real. And then she woke up and first looked at him, and his heart melted. He's been taught love doesn't last, and romantic love is a con. He makes a point to say nothing romantic or sexual will happen without her say so. Uh, the bond itself will make her powerful, even if a love bond will make her uh, super powerful. Um, and then I wrote down a note of, is it wrong for me to ship dust and kite in enemies to lovers? <laughs> Real! No, <'cause> <laughs> they're fighting all the time over this girl. I'm like, you know what, make it easier just to delete the girl and be together. <laughs> Why are we only on the same wavelength? I the way this episode may be two hours long, and I'm fine with that. I can't wait to edit this. Me too. Um. Uh. They go to release Luke finally. Oh, I have another highlight. Um. Oh God, this is so credence. Uh, I haven't learned many lessons that have stuck in my life, but more. Humans more problems is absolutely one of them. Credence, I love you. <laughs> and that's the end of the Credence chapter, so sad. I just want a this, whole book of we, just Credence is, chapters. We are the Credence fan club. Hello. Um, <laughs> Listen. Uh, team Jacob versus Team Edward. Old. Used. Done a decade before. But have you heard of the Credence fan <laughs> Team Credence. Hello? I'll make t-shirts. Oh, yeah. Please! It would be so funny! I'm just going to put a bunch of Lynx faces all over it. <laughs> and then just say spores. <laughs> I'm coming back as a spore. And then just Lynx faces. Uh... You gotta put that one emoji, that one edited emoji that's like has the finger and it's biting its lip. You know the one? <laughs> you gotta put one of those there. Um, so, they go to release Luke, uh, and it's a Ren chapter, uh, Luke threatens her initially, and she's just like, yeah, I'm gonna let you go, um, and then, uh, he's all like, what? And then, for some reason, so, he, she does this whole spiel about how, yeah, sometimes life gives you shitty stuff to deal with, like, um, 
how she's now like supposed to become the chosen one and all this stuff or like when you turn 13 and you learn about periods and then they all apparently all these boys have like sisters and like whatnot so they know what periods are and so they all are just like yeah periods are the worst <laughs> um they're so real for that and she mentions that uh learning you're the chosen one is only slightly worse than periods yeah um so he offers to i can see that checking out you know yeah he doesn't want to be one of her bonded mates or whatever um but he does offer to help her train um for new id since his kidnapping uh because basically the other wolves uh took him off the street i think in la uh threw him in the back of a van um and drove them there and just dropped them off because like they needed a wolf with the mark, and it's very rare to find a wolf with the mark, right? Um, and so, uh, because of this, he broke parole. Um, and so he's, like, in trouble, and so he needs a new ID and run to Canada, uh, to, like, live a free life at this point. Um, he has an ankle tracker, uh, and no one thought to check, but, like, also, like, they get a little bit upset about him never mentioning it. He's like, dude, you kidnapped me, but also, like, the way that the other wolves never checked it out, and so maybe, like, maybe, uh, it was, like, a trap and whatnot, because, um, at that point, as soon as they learn about the tracker, sirens are heard, and they have to run. Um, everyone goes their separate ways, and Credence is left to help Ren, uh, catching her off a fence, twirling her, and then setting her down before they run through the forest, holding hands, trying to avoid cops. Um, he offers to let her escape her destiny, saying it's still her choice, and, um, yeah, that's the end of that chapter. Um, Translation, Credence is the only man ever. Yes. Um, everyone groups back up and decide the safest path is to go to where Kite is from, um, which is a reservation on this island. Uh, one of his sisters runs the police there, so they should be able to stay hidden. Um, they get out of the car, look at Credence and Des going one way while Kite walks with Ren with a plan to call his family so they know that they're coming. Um, Des, Kite, and Credence or not Kite, just Luke and Credence are going to, like, just for a walk to walk Luke, because he's in the trunk of the car. Um, but also... They're going to walk the dog! Yep. Um, but they're also going to break into okay, a place that's going to be a thing to get into. Um, hi, puppy. I really love puppy. Kite's sister, by the way. Me too. <laughs> puppy. Puppy. Right now. I'm not on my bed. I was supposed to pet you when you are on my bed, when I'm not on my bed. Bella. Fine. Um, anyways, uh, he's walking Ren so that she can stretch her legs, and he's gonna call his mom so he can be like, hey, this is what's happening, we're coming by, make sure we have a place to stay. Um, so, Kite texts his mom, the info, um, oh, I was like, what the hell does this mean when he, I say he feeds on Ren? You know what that means, and um, we get to figure out what his large hands are good for. Um, um, I have a, I have a highlight oh. for right after that. Oh. I'll let you explain a little more because you'll probably have it written down first. <laughs> I love that for you. But yeah, he eats a meal and then she's about to return the favor when his mom calls, which is funny to me. Oh my god, I just realized the next quote I have written down is a Credence quote. And I just glimpsed at it. Okay. It's so good. <laughs> Okay, okay but like, hold on. Okay. I, okay. I, okay. I have a, because she, like, they were talking about his mom called and then she started talking about her parents and stuff because she was like, oh my god, I'm in some parents, blah, 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 blah. I remember that. Um, I highlighted this part. Uh, there's a phone right there, Red. And then I, uh, wrote, you just got head and you want to call your parents? Girl, bye. <laughs> I know, right? Um, so, a little bit before that, she tells Kite about her weird dream with the uh, monster chasing her on the beach type thing. Um, and he tells her it may be her Vera Morgana powers and to tell Dust, but also to tell his mom when they get there. Uh, because she may be able to be able to help because she deciphers prophecy dreams. Um, that's kind of what she does. Um. Eventually, like, that whole thing that you mentioned happens. And then, uh, she does get him to let her text her bestie. Um, they make this whole plan where, uh, 
basically she'll text him off his cell phone or she'll text her on her, his cell phone right um and then they'll delete the messages and block her number so that she can't message them back at any moment in time so they don't like so the others don't find out about it right um but basically the plan is that she uses Carrie Ann to send a message to her parents that she's still alive um Kite goes into the woods to give her privacy uh but she has a feeling something is watching her from the trees um it's never really explained uh, it's like it never goes anywhere but I think maybe Atlas or something um and then the next chapter is just their text messages, uh, which is basically Carrie is ready to fight. Ryan mentions she feels better without her meds, and Carrie questions if her parents were poisoning her to make her look sick for sympathy. Um, there's like that whole thing. Um, Ren says she hopes not and gets hurt. Mm -hmm. Um, this is partially why I don't like Kai, because why would he make this decision? Why would he let her do that? I don't know. Because obviously that's where everything went downhill. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like Kai's fault. Yes. Yeah. Um, Ren, because he was being stupid. Yeah, yeah, no, I agree with you. Um, Ren says she hopes not and gives a message to tell her parents that she loves them. Um, th I wrote down, this is what I started to question, if mates have to be the opposite gender, or can they be the same gender as you? Uh, cause then I was like, can we have Carrie Ann as one of the mates? I like their romance more. Um, and then I was like, I know Carrie Ann isn't a shifter, but a girl can dream. Um, and then I was like, does anyone else care that Sierra is still missing? That they never found her or her body? Like, does anyone care? No way I know what happens to her and you don't. <laughs> oh, so no. It's like hinted at some stuff in this one. Um, so they block Harry's number and erase the messages. I don't think you'll figure it out. I, I, I mean, there's some stuff that's messaged. Oh, we'll get there. Um... So, Credence is at the car when they get back, and they says they could all hear her moaning. Oh, yeah, right before they get there, she's like, I don't want to tell anyone else about what happened, because I want to keep it between us. And he's like, I don't kiss and tell, so you're good. And then they get there, Credence is like, hey, I heard you moaning. <laughs> um, uh, and so, he's all like, hey, just like, so you know, he like doesn't make a big deal of it. He's like, just so you know, we could all hear you. So, like, from now on, either go somewhere farther away, or just be quieter, um, and just leaves at that. And then he just, like, instantly moves on. Uh, which we love Craigslist for. Um, he can, like, obviously tell that she's uncomfortable with this and just moves on. Um, but the whole entire, like, hearing her get it on, um, upset dust. So him and Luke are breaking into a hardware store. Um, they're now confirmed staying at Kite's home reservation. Um, they wait in the car where she realizes her birth mother wasn't actually a drug addict who gave her kids a disease via dirty needle it was all a lie to control her and that her sister was basically murdered before she could be rescued um this makes uh her really angry and she accidentally sets the car seat on fire um the first of her powers um and then i wrote down loki well, think her sister was rescued and the fire sh she supposedly died in was a cover-up uh, parentheses, there was no body, or she was killed by Atlas either for being a fair herself or being a fair bait. Hear me out. I did not see her catching on fire. I did not see that coming at all. But also, just imagine Dust being so dramatic and being British. It would be so funny. Know, um, right? uh, when she caught on fire, uh, Kite's hand was on her knee. That's kind of a thing. Um, so... Because she was on fire, so it's Dust Chapter, and he comes in, and, um, she's basically naked because, uh, she was on fire, she was in a seat that was on fire, so her clothes burned in the fire. Um, so she's only wearing her sneakers that are a little too big for her, and, uh, Luke's jacket, Luke gave her a jacket. Um, I love, I love how it's just a breeze past that, like, they basically all just saw her naked. Um, uh, Titan was also burned, Dust feels like a shitty leader. Uh, they start to walk, but there's a storm coming, because they can't drive the car anymore. Um, but there's a storm coming, so they split up to find shelter. The lucky coin he gave Ren is actually a way for him to make sure she's still alive due to a love spell. Dust and Ren hide in the log. He gives her, oh yeah, he, he strips down, and he's like, I'm gonna give you my boxers. So you have something to wear on the bottom, right? Because she's, at this point, is just wearing this jacket. And so, he's like, I'm gonna give you my boxers. So she turns around while he strips down, puts his pants back on. The way that he's probably wearing jeans, and that's probably causing some shaping issues or something. But anyways, um, gives her his boxers. The, can you imagine just putting on some man's dirty boxers in the middle of the woods? Because, like, 
No, I could not. I would never be in that situation ever. Um. Um. Anyways, uh, they have flamingos on them. Uh, she likes that fact. Um, and then you learn he's a griffin. From his point of view, he's all like, "Ah, oh, being a griffin," and then it's just drop. And I'm just like, "What the fuck?" Um, that's why he's considered shifter royalty and is in charge. Um, oh yeah, this is when I mentioned feels like the griffin thing was mentioned earlier, but edited it out due to how nonchalant it was when it was brought up. Like, it was just brought up out of the blue and then dropped instantly. Um. He's about to kiss this her. This is irrelevant. This is very irrelevant, but I just opened this Nathan Hannah yogurt, different brand. It's filled up to the motherfucking top, and the very, very top, the other one, there's usually a little gap. Like a sizable gap just filled the very tip top. I don't know. <laughs> Not that emoji. Oh my god. I just opened up the message to see the emoji. Um, where was I? Oh yeah, Dusty's about to kiss her when the storm starts and the others join them in the log. Um, there's at least three shifters who may be kinborn outside, so they make a plan for when the storm ends. Uh, Dust registers with Ren's ability she could easily burn down the log they're in, but her scent is comforting, so it's okay. Um, they all end up falling asleep, Dust last, with Ren's head on his shoulder. Um, oh, this is my note where I start talking about... Um, my thoughts on all four of them. Dust is too cocky for me. Uh, don't really know anything about Luke. Sometimes I forget he's there. Kite is low-key boring. And Credence is still top tier. Um, and then at some point, it's mentioned that Sierra is presumed dead. Next chapter, we're back to Ren. Um, they have trekked eight miles to a bus station. Uh, the reservation is on an island, and there's a beach, which reminds me of Ren's dream. So I think Atlas is going to show up. Not really. That doesn't happen. Uh, Ren feels guilty about that the others had to go through all this. Luke gives her a blueberry muffin, which she barely really eats. They have this whole conversation um, where he helps her out. And he's like, hey, you have to be strong and stuff. Uh, but not only for, like, all of us and finding this war, but also, like, for yourself. Um, you have a second chance. Um, there's another 10-mile walk to the reservation. Uh, Luke makes a funny joke about getting marshmallows to roast. Oh, yeah. Uh, he's all like, I, I contemplate getting marshmallows so I could, uh, roast them on you. <laughs> Which I found really funny. Um, I love him. No, that's why I love him. He, everyone's wrong will say something like that, and he's just so real. Yeah, that's, like, my favorite thing about, like, that was my favorite part of his so far in this whole entire book. Um, so he, When he's there, it's so necessary. That's yeah. the whole thing about him. Yes. Um, uh, we learned that he was in prison for murder, killing the six kill, kill, kinborn, there we go, who killed his brother, um, she doesn't want to kill slash harm anyone and wants to find another way to defeat Atlas, but she understands his wanting to get revenge on his brother's killers, um, being as, like, she just briefly thought about her sister, um, possibly being murdered, and, um, she ended up burning down a whole entire car, and, uh, so, you know, she understands. Um, where am I? Uh, oh yeah, next chapter. The swarm. And then I wrote in my blue pencil, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> actually said out loud. <laughs> um, so the swarm is actually Atlas. Um, and at this point you learn that, well, he tortured some raccoon, I assume it's Sierra, for information, um, has assassinated just higher ups, and that's why they can't communicate with them and get any more money and plans and whatnot. Um, and plans to call a doctor to snuff out Ren's light. Um, I assume that's Highborn. Um, and uses cancer terms for whenever he describes Ren. Like, um, he says that her powers have metastasized and stuff like that. Which I found interesting. Um, but that's about that. Um, next chapter, we're back to Ren. Uh, there's a weird conversation about how women are more, uh, appreciative of life, therefore they should run the world. Um, because they give birth, therefore they understand the importance of life, and therefore women should run the world. I was like, that's a little weird, but okay. Um, she meets Kite's mother, uh, she's in bear form when she does this, and, uh, the mother likes her. Uh, so he takes her to his mom's place while everyone else goes to this other cabin. Um, there's a lot of stuff about the politics of the reservation and the government and how the government has treated them and all this stuff, um, which, like, isn't important for, like, the purpose of this podcast, but, like, for the purpose of, like, further 
allegory and metaphors for how um, the government treats uh, people of color and whatnot throughout this book um, is kind of like important in that aspect, right? Um, so they're all going to this other cabin that technically can't be used for this whole thing anymore uh, because government laws, quote unquote. So uh, they're all going there while he takes Ren to his mom's place so she can borrow some of his sister's clothes. Um, yeah. Uh, next chapter, she takes a hot shower, uh, at which point I know I'm all so these- happy. I feel like we should go through the rest of my highlights with them, because I have some more. Okay. Um, she takes a shower, and that's when I know that all these men are falling for her when she's stanky. Um. <laughs> well, isn't there a whole science thing about how, like, your natural sins and blah 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 blah. And plus, they're half animal. They can shift into animals, so like animals and sins, blah blah blah. Like that's, that's the thing in the soul to keep. Just wait for it. Um, I I can't wait for you to read that part. And you'd be like, "What the fuck?" Oh, I love how she smells like me. Anyways, um, so uh, what if I'm not like, "What the fuck?" What would you do then? I'd be like, "What the fuck?" The way that she, the, his smile is what makes me go more like, what the fuck. Um, but yeah. Um, so, basically there's a scene where she sits out and eats food with his family. Um, and his mom tries, uh, starts trying to train her. Um, and at which point they do like a vision quest thing type thing. Uh, and we learn that Atlas has somehow hijacked her spirit realm. Uh, and some believe that all fairs share one spirit realm so they can all communicate with each other when they're alive, but, like, none of them are alive, so they're the only two, and that's why he's there. Um, so that makes it really difficult for her to shift because you have to go into your spirit realm to be able to shift, and so she can't enter her spirit realm because he's there. And they eventually learn, because, like, he was, like, tipping her boat over and stuff in the spirit realm, and uh, her shirt was wet in real life. So, um, basically, they learn if he kills her there, she's dead in real life type thing. Um, and also, uh... That's why he was, like, in her dream earlier. Uh, he may be able to be in her dreams and whatnot. Because it's, like, adjacent to the spirit realm. Um. Yeah, that's about that whole entire chapter. Uh, chapter 28, we got credit explanation mark. <laughs> Real. Um, okay, I got a highlight that I gotta talk about, apparently. Uh. Oh, God, this is a long one. I wrote down long one. <laughs> Um, they're basically at this dance slash ceremony they're uh, throwing at the reservation for all these visitors and whatnot, right? Um, and I quote, they say an elephant never forgets, but cats hold grudges like no other creature on God's green earth. Don't let our laid back exteriors fool you. I never met a grudge I couldn't carry strapped to my back until the end of time, and the rest of my family the same way. We'll laugh off an insult and shrug away betrayal, giving every impression of forgetting, forgiving and moving on. But secretly, we're waiting, watching, planning, and hoping, and looking for that perfect opportunity to pounce and rip your throat out. And when you ask why, we'll remind you of that exact date, the exact hour, the precise moment when you set the wheels of karma in motion and revenge became a foregone conclusion. Real. Anyways, <laughs> I felt that was important to mention. Um, he doesn't trust Luke. Um, and then he knows his, uh, that Ren is drunk on half a beer. Uh, it's like the first time she's had alcohol. Um, so she calls him sweet. Uh, oh, hold on. Hmm? She was drunk off a... Never mind, she's skinny. I was gonna say this bitch was drunk off half a beer. She's skinny. Yeah. <laughs> I've had, like, full drinks before, and I, I've never been drunk. <laughs> yeah, no. Half a beer does not touch me. So I was like... But she's skinny, and it's, like, her first alcohol ever. I get it. Um, so she's drunk, and she starts calling him sweet um so he kisses her and in its mind is to prove her wrong um but it turns into a full-on makeout session in public um uh, uh he tells her he wants to go to bone town and she stammers out that she's a virgin in reply and he says he can fix that quote unquote um he doesn't mind sharing because he knew what he signed up for and says when they're alone together he'll make her forget about the other so it doesn't matter and I was like, I'm sure he can. I'm sure he can. Bye. Um, then he notices that Luke's left the party. Um, so he's like, hey, save my seat. And then goes to search for Luke. Um, 
before deciding, hey, I'm just going to tell Dust that he's gone. Um, I'm sorry. I might have to go back and read certain parts of the third book after she goes back. We learned that he can only see visions one to two times a week due to how much energy it takes. Um, and in his visions, he has seen that Luke is hiding something. Uh, that's why he doesn't trust him. Uh, he's starting to feel like he'd be willing to choose Ren without fate. And, you know, sometimes I want credence to choose me, you know? And that's Thanks, the end of- Are you good? No, I love this man too much. Uh, Do I need to make you a credence like that one Disney movie, Build a Better Boy? <laughs> Um, and that's the end of the last Credence chapter in this whole book. So sad. Um, so, chapter 29. Oh, God, I remember this. Chapter 29. Um, uh, Ren feels desire, uh, and wants to form some of these mate bonds, which is, like, they're, like, have a basic bond in place. They all do. But if she, like, has sex with one of them, it becomes a mate bond, and she can, uh, it's, like, makes her even more powerful, and also she can use their abilities after that, right? Um, Hear me out, mate. Bonds are kind of self-explanatory. <laughs> okay, I was making sure. Um, so after Kite's dance, uh, she leaves with him to to the dock. Uh, despite saying, telling Kree that she'd save his seat for him, and then I wrote in my blue pencil, "I'll save a seat for you, Credence." <laughs> uh, I'm sick. Um, she tells Kite she loves him and wants to go to Bone Town. Um, and then I wrote down this book idea where the character actually says they want to go to Bone Town and they are literally taken to Bone Town, like the city of Bone. Please. <laughs> like instead of telling Please. their certificate other that they want to have sex, they're like, I want to go to Bone Town, and then they take them to a literal town of Bone. <laughs> I'm begging you right now. <laughs> um, this is what happens after 50 hours of being in a power outage, okay? Um, he returns the sentiment, um, and they go to her room, starting to strip. Um, um, chapter 30 is Kite's point of view, um, and I've noted that there's only a few more chapters, and we're at the Bone Town. Um, he wants to take it slow. I make the note that this is more erotic than Dino Stud. Um, <laughs> that's, you're gonna see that as a theme throughout multiple next episodes, because, like, I make that joke. And not only the things we never get uh, over notes, but I also made that joke in the Azolda Keep notes. And they haven't even, like, done anything. And I'm like, oh, this is more erotic than that. <laughs> I'm more into it. Um, yeah. Um, so he Hear me out, though. Mm -hmm. um, I don't mind this but in the trilogy at all because, like, it's not either. overly gross on his, like, on the guy's part because, obviously, because, like, Sub is just too gross for me on that half of it, you know what I mean? Because, mm -hmm. obviously. <laughs> Anyways, so it's, like, not that bad for me personally. Um, he recognizes she's really wet. Um, she's ready to go. Um, but I made the note that, wait a second, she got wet from kissing Credence, so, um, she, she got started in wet from Credence, and she's letting Kite finish for him, is basically what's happening. <laughs> I felt like that was very important to bring up. Um. Sick. They bone. Uh, their souls are entwined. Both their power stronger. He realizes he's fine with her bonding with the others, because their bond is special. Um. And he's about to tell her this when his phone goes off with an alarm that there's an intruder. Uh, so he calls up his sister because like, she's like the head of the police and also like to make sure she's safe and stuff. Um, and apparently um, the humans are here. Uh, they found them. And uh, they sent something into the reservation over the walls or like fences or something. Uh, so Kai is going to stop it while Ren hides out at the lodge. But she has to go to like the dance first to be like, hey, because all the people who can fight are there. Um... And then he jumps out a window, but right before he does, he uh, lets her know, in case he dies, it's been the best night of his life. Be so serious, Kai. Be so serious. When you bang a woman one time, you're like, it's the best night of my life. Real. Um, chapter 31 is Ren. Uh, so we learn the humans have genetically engineered monsters to fight the shifters. Um, 
so by the time she gets to the dance area, um, a ton of people have already died. There's, like, only one in there, too. Um, and, uh, basically, it's going after, uh, this little girl. There was, like, some banter with her earlier on, uh, with her and her sister, uh, when she was making out with Credence and stuff, right? Um, there's some banter there. Uh, so this girl's, like, crying for mom. Later on, we learned the other girl died, so only one of her, one of them survived. Um, but basically, to save the girl, um, Ren attacks the monster to distract it and tells her to run. And then Ren is being shredded alive. Um, and I wrote down, you know what would be helpful right now? A griffin. Duh. <laughs> I'm so salty over that. Okay, um... She burns his flesh, revealing a person inside forced to kill. Um, she's about to help him when Luke shows up and kills him, shooting him in the face. Um, and takes her to the car so they can all escape. And she's like, where's Kite? And he's like, he's at the car. If you want to make sure that he's safe, you better come with me to the car. Um, and he, when they're in the car, he pulls out this blanket that he found on one of the other bees. He, he killed three of them, I think. Um, and it's a blanket... Uh, that was hers from her room, um, that they used to track her scent, so they were all targeting her, and so now she feels guilty. Next chapter. Um, oh, I started with a highlight. Let's go. Sorry, who else would they be targeting? Can she be serious? I don't know. Sometimes she's really dumb. Um, like, I get the recognizing that her, the, everything about her mother was a lie, and her sister, uh, was basically murdered. Um, recognition took a bit, because, like, she has been chased, kidnapped, almost drowned and all this stuff learned shifting is real learn she's the savior all in like a day and a half so like i get it she's stressed but like and the first time she like sits there and takes a minute oh and she's been shot um it takes a minute but like still it, it, it she kind of dumb sometimes anyways um i have a new quote uh dust who promises to explain when he's authorized to tell us more luke invites us to go fuck his authorization kite insists keeping us in the dark isn't protecting anyone, and Credence casually asks for a show of hands to see how many people would like to kick dust off the island. Real? I feel like... No, I love them. I like, feel I like can't, this like, shows just... their characters perfectly. Like, dust is all, like, the order exactly. of, the group, like, of this organization. We got order and rules and all this stuff. And then Luke's all like, shut the fuck up. Um, and Kite's all like, Listen, this isn't helping anyone. And then Credence is, like, making a joke about it while also stating his point or, like, his feelings about the whole thing at the same time. And we love that for him. Anyways, um, I really like that one. Uh, they question Luke where he was after, um, oh, where he left, when he left the party, right? Um, and he explains that after seeing all the families, uh, like, having a good time and stuff, uh, he got sad remembering his dead family, so he took a run. You know, it makes sense. Uh, he went on a little run because he felt sad. Um, God, I just saw a little... next highlight. Never I mind. also pace because I cannot run when I get sad. Don't worry, same, Credence, same. you're no, so I do the same thing. I will pace on the phone when I have to do a phone call or something because I do not. I If I get any stress, I'm just like, start pacing. Um, there's, there's this hilarious story that I made Bestie a birthday cake once by hand and everything that could go wrong went wrong. So while I was waiting, I was just pacing. And so, in, like, three hours, I had 3,000, or not 3,000, 7,000 steps, um, and whatnot. Listen, and then I, I, I think just it, cleaned the house, because I was like, well, I'm already pacing, might as well clean the house while I pace. I pace so fast that I can get 7,000 steps in 30 minutes. I'm sick. Um, so, he went on a run, and then he saw the bad guys, uh, when they went bad guys went the way that they went to get into the reservation, which is the back way, um, entrance, so that, uh, they wouldn't be seen in case Kilborn or, or Kinborn were watching the front entrance, uh, for Kite, because it's, like, a thing where they have said that if he returns home, they'll kill his old family, um, so that's the thing they did, and so he remembered that them saying, hey, this is, like, a hidden entrance, uh, so he's like, that's a little suspicious, um, and so he went in to figure out what was happening and ended up killing three of the monsters, um, Ren is already healed, Dust's higher ops aren't answering, uh, which is worrying everyone even more, which we all know is because Atlas kills them. Um, they stop at a gas station, and while Ren is in the bathroom, she has an emotional onslaught. Basically, um, she has Kite's empathy powers, but, uh, she doesn't know how to control it yet, so it's, like, all of it all at once. Uh, so she leaves the bathroom. Me on a normal day. Yeah. Oh, she, she leaves the bathroom, um, 
And she notices that the two that were supposed to go into the gas station with her to, like, keep guard of the door, quote-unquote, um, aren't there. So she goes outside, and she sees the four of them standing off against Carrie Ann, who's all bruised up. Dun-dun-dun, chapter 33. Um, Carrie Ann was the one to sell them out to the humans, uh, that caused the murder of a lot of people on the reservation. Um, so... You know, I hope Kite felt so bad for that. Mm-hmm. Um learn the stuff about the bomb, blah, 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 um, so she can use the powers on her own now, she has to learn how to control them herself, um, but she senses someone else in the car, and Kite's, like, trying to explain to her what's happening with the empathy and stuff and whatnot, so he's, like, right next to her, she's like, hey, by the way, I'll just send someone else in the car, and he's like, cool, I'll check it out, low-key, and I'll go around so, like, they don't see me coming, you stay here, um, Carrie Ann says it was Dr. Highborn who originally took her off the streets and fixed her up, um, I thought maybe, uh, like, she was a shifter, like, you know how he took kids off the street, um, and did treat, tested the treatments out on them? I thought maybe yeah. she, he did it on her, and, uh, she was one of the few to survive. Just a theory of mine. Um, and, but in payment made her spy on Ren, um, she escaped after seeing the massacre at the reservation on their, like, computer screens, um, and then, uh, Kite pulls the people out of the car, and it's Ren's adoptive parents. Dun, 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 chapter 34. Um, she has a fight with her parents, and then compares the whole thing to Nazi Germany. Which I can kind of see. Like, it's different. What? <laughs> yeah, no, she, she compares the whole genocide of the shifters to Nazi Germany. Which I can, like, kind of see, but you could have just said genocide. You didn't have to use a specific example. Respectfully like be so serious. Yeah. Uh, that's, I, okay, uh... I don't know why they had to be very specific about it, but, yeah. Um, offers to continue a relationship with, after, like, a lot of fighting, um, continue a relationship with parents in Carrie Ann if they change their ways and recognize what they did was wrong. Um, everyone gets really upset about this. All the boys get upset, except Kite. Kite's all like, oh, I love you because you still love people. I'm like, also, she should, like, you know, hear me out. Stand up for herself. Hear me out. I'm very similar to Rin. But if I was in her situation, I would tell the bitches to fuck off so fast. That's the difference. I That's just the main difference. Up on and be like, you want to go? <laughs> That's what I do. But I'm crazy. So, um, Carrie Ann mentions that all shifter kids taken in Seattle. Oh yeah, they're in Seattle. Um, get trackers put in their arms. Uh, but Doctor Highborn has scrambled the other receiver, so he's the only one who can uh track her. Uh, which like, backs up my theory that he's secretly working for Atlas, right? Um, before they, uh, before Carrie and, and her parents, uh, left, they took out his power lines and have a plan to take Ren's chap tracker and go into a random direction. So they'll have a head start, um, and that way they'll be chasing them and not Ren, right? Uh, she learns from Dust her quote unquote real last name is Wander. Um so her name is Ren Wander. Um in her dreams she talks to her birth mother, uh, who's a fox shifter and she says the sister is alive. Um Oh yeah, there's like this whole thing uh where it's like she's seeing the fox again and it turns out to be in her mother. Uh and I was like, wait a second, what fucking fox? And apparently occasionally she was like seeing foxes in her dreams and whatnot and it was her mother. Uh, and it's all reminiscent of the fox picture that her sister painted when they were kids, right? Um, also mentioned Scarlet, uh, the sister, is pretending, and that he knows she's not the Feta, um, so I think she was baiting Atlas to keep Ren safe, um, one of the four knows where Scarlet is, they just don't know that they know it, um, and in her sleep, she shifted for the first time into a fox. Um, highlight 17 from Credence is, um, a Firefox. Isn't that a search engine? Credence asks, can you turn into a search engine, Ren? I found that too I love funny. that. I found that too funny. I cackled. I cackled out loud. I was dying. I also laughed. I was like, Ren, or not Ren, Credence, Credence, why? I was laughing so hard. Credence gets me on a level. Um, Kite ends up petting her, which is like, a little weird to me, but whatever. Uh, causing her to purr. Um, oh yeah, I wanted to look up, do foxes purr? 
Yes, I am taking a moment. Do they? That's that's a very I'm serious a... question. They do. Okay, why is that kind of cute? Why are um, they kind of cute? That... Those already cute. <laughs> animals that produce purr like sounds include mongooses, bears, kangaroos, wallabies, wallaroos, badgers, foxes, hyenas, rabbits, squirrels, guinea pigs, uh, tapers, ring-tailed lemurs, and gorillas while eating. Animals purr for a variety of reasons, including to express happiness or fear, and as a defensive mechanism. So, I guess it means that she's happy. Um, you want to win half of those by me again? Because what the fuck? <laughs> no. <laughs> Kangaroo. Uh, oh, highlight 18. Um, fate is something that happens to you no matter how hard you might try to stop it. Destiny is something you fight for no matter what stands in your way. These men, strong, fierce, but also gentle, kite, serious and secretly tender-hearted dust, dangerously sexy credence, and just plain dangerous Luke. They all belong to me. Anyways, um, she's basically accepted, uh, that she wants to low-key mate with all of them. Um, and it ends with them headed to a new safe house over the Canadian border. Dun-dun-dun. Um, my question, oh yeah, I already talked about the uh, progression of outfits on the covers My for my last thoughts. Um, there's also a uh, question, where's Sierra? Uh, also, why do I continue- I know where Sierra is! <laughs> Shush. Um, why do I instantly want to continue this series? Why was it kind of- Real, good? I had that same reaction. Uh, I want more smut. And then also, uh, I was gonna ask you what's your boy, mine's obviously Credence, but I already got the answer from you, so- <laughs> But yeah, that's my notes. Um, you said you wanted to go over some of your highlights. Yes. Uh, I was not joking about reading some parts from the third book again. Because, you know. Um, so we got the phone one. And then I highlighted not even my parents. I don't know the full quote. That's just the part I highlighted. But I, I said, it's your parents' fault. Shut up. Um. <laughs> Oh, she's probably like, I don't blame anyone, not even my parents. I think that's what. Yes. Uh, that's what um, but I also highlighted that sounds traumatizing. Someone said that. And then I said, no shit, Sherlock. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> then I highlighted this quote. Maybe they were simply ignorant or doing what they were told. Maybe they weren't poisoning us. Maybe they were poisoning, uh, poisoning us out of love, but it doesn't matter if they killed her with love or with hate. My sister is still dead. Um, and I also did uh, this one. Yes. Um, what? Why were you looking at Instagram reels while I was recording this, man? <laughs> <laughs> and why did you say to me <laughs> Listen, my attention span needs some help sometimes, okay? Okay. I was listening. Don't worry. I see how it is. I love you. <laughs> um, my sister is dead, and I will never know who she could have been. Spreading through my veins and whooshing into my chest like flames, leaping into a forge as a, blast, uh, as a blacksmith pumps his bellows. What the fuck does that mean? I don't know why I heard that. I don't know. Where's the rest of it? Um, I was split. Okay, Twitter, go away. I was no. split second to realize that something's been serious, something seriously wrong before the seat beneath me burst into flames. And I said, oh, question mark, question mark, question mark, my question mark, question mark, God, all caps, question mark, question mark, question mark, question mark. Oh my God. <laughs> Another quote. Um, if I don't excel at something initially, I keep at it until I achieved mastery or I abandoned the past fight leaving it for those with more natural building. Real. Um, I also highlighted uh, we understand that I was going to my highlights. Sierra, Celeste's lover, and I said gay question mark, question mark, question mark, question mark, question mark. Uh this is a someone said this. I'm assuming it's kite. Um by my manly thighs and I said girl bye <laughs> I love that. Mind you, this was like 2021. I don't remember how old I was, but apparently I said girl by a lot. Um, <laughs> that was two years ago, so um, you were 17 or 18. Yeah. I was mm-hmm. December, so was I 18? Yeah, yeah you would have just heard it. Why were you reading this when you were just barely 18? Child. Dusty, I was reading Five Sauce fan fiction at like 13, 14. Um, oh, yeah. Full of smut. Be serious. <laughs> 
can't we're say not gonna... anything. I'm the same way, but the child, please. I read Tristic's Venom when I was 18. Was I 19? No, I was 18. <laughs> anyway, white daisy sprout from beneath the stones, seeming to promise that life will find a way to be beautiful, no matter how hard things get. So cheesy, I'm sick. Now, this is a big one. This is a paragraph. I am. But that's probably why it seems so easy to start caring about them. I've never been out with this one. Okay, I mean, these are, you could see these that I've highlighted this on Goodreads, it doesn't matter. I've never been able to identify with people whose personal history is all sweetness and light and well lit path through fields full of flowers. The damaged souls who fought their way out of woods to emerge fairly breathing out the fringes of society are the ones that speak to me, the ones whose heart vibrate at the same frequency as mine. Anyways, it's a sad vibration sometimes, but it has a depth. Be so serious. I'm sorry, not this highlight has been true true negated due to consecutive passive link passive link restrictions. I want to read it though. Okay. She prefers women, comma, and I just said a bunch of exclamation points. Real. I love that for you. Um turned on turned on her comrades only a few days into her torture, just 48 hours after being pulled. I said, OMG, no. Um, the fact she bears the mark of a possible mate and wasn't enough to, wasn't enough to tempt us, dot, dot, dot. Um, because that's as much as it does before. Yeah. Um, I said, we lost! All caps, exclamation like 27 million exclamation marks we lost and more exclamation points uh and especially uh the t emoji face that makes it look like it's crying specifically i used specifically would use and still use that because of mystic messenger anyways i <laughs> not the next one uh this is a, uh someone said this or just suck in a different way and i said fuck off <laughs> anyway um, I've never given a ton of thought to smelling good, aside from basic, basic cleanliness, of course. But all of a sudden, I long to smell sweet, tempting. To give Kite a reason to bring his nose to my neck and and inhale. Okay. I feel like this I, says too much I, about I, me. I don't know what it says, but it says I want, something. I want to mention that in the scene, she's putting on the lotion that his sister gave to her. Which means she wants him to be turned on by the smell of his sister's lotion. Maybe I'm just, maybe she's just, maybe she's just like, because it, it'll be on me. It's on me, you know? <laughs> I don't know. Oh my god. Okay, I have some more. Uh, uh, I've never imagined him this would be. I, okay. Some of these are getting kind of. I never imagined knew this would be easy, but the knowledge that I'm so intimately connected to Atlas and that he can reach me when he would, why am I speaking like this? When we're a thousand miles apart is, is sobering, sickening. <laughs> it makes me feel like I'm diseased, infected with a darkness. I have no idea how to begin to purge. Real. I don't know what that means, but real. Um, if she, if she only knew how I failed the kids in my life and I said, what? And then I was like, Oh, and then literally the next <laughs> the next highlight is my nieces or nephews, and then I said I'm dumb. I was yeah, stressed yeah, yeah, for a yeah, moment. Yeah, yeah. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, I'm um, I'm at seventy eight percent in my highlights, so Ooh. and they said at fifty six percent. But Creedence smells like candy because he's so sweet, and I said L M F A O. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that. That's um, really before he kisses her. And then turns into full on makeout, so she he just meant to give her a little kiss, a little kissy kiss, and then she's just like, "Hey, guess what?" And then you know, she, 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 she said, "You know what?" <laughs> you know, Slim. I would. I, I like her. I do oh. the same. <laughs> I don't. I don't know if I want to say this. Should I say this one? I mean, I could obviously. I mean, I could okay. I out. highlighted this part and put a little note on this one. Um. <laughs> okay. Slim. I like her, and I want to fuck her way more than I anticipated, and I said, bye, all caps. 
Yeah. I'm not going to say this next one. I'm just going to say the word wet. Um, and I said girl bye. Um, I'm just going to say the word, because you can go go to my Goodreads and see these highlights, right? Um, I'm just going to say the word harder. And I said, I swear to God, if this bitch gets pregnant. Yep. Mm. Uh, the, <laughs> uh, the next one is destruction is easy. <laughs> Okay. We got another paragraph. I closed my... Hold on. Hold on. Let me read this over. I decided... Okay, it's fine. I closed my eyes as waves of love... As a wave of love washes through me so intense, it leaves me breathless. Lips parting in a silent cry, I press my fist to my chest as love and pain and regret slam into me again and again Mm -hmm. until my ribs feel like a seaside cliff battered by an angry ocean. Fighting to pull in a deeper breath, I stagger toward the bathroom door, my vision so blurred with tears that it takes three attempts to turn the lock. So real, bestie. Yeah, no, I think that I was pretty sure that was when she was in the gas station bathroom. Uh, when she was feeling the onslaught of emotions due to the empathy, and yeah. <laughs> yeah, because the next quote, I'm too overwhelmed by the emotional onslaught rolling me over and over, sucking me under like a riptide and dragging me away from the shore of myself. I don't know who these feelings belong to. I love how, I love I have... how the uh, the things that I mentioned but didn't really go into detail about, you end up having giant quotes about. <laughs> I have to I have to read more. Um, they want to keep us apart so we can never learn how alike we are, how much we have in common, how much how much we all just want to be, how much we want to love and be loved. I feel like these highlights say too much about me. Or Kite might just roll over in bed and crush you. And I said, LMFAO. Who said that? And that feels like a credence or a I was going to say, I think that was credence. Real. Uh, the last one is, oh, <laughs> we already hear a for this A Firefox, isn't that a search engine? Creed and fast. Can you come to a search engine, Ren? Uh, I love that. Oh, I just thought about something. When we do the Witcher King episode, that also means covering the Golden Raven, and I have so many highlights for the Golden Raven, even though it's a 32-page novella. Mm-hmm. Yes, you do. I have the one one highlight, you know, about ice cream. Shut the fuck up. Um, <laughs> I have, there's 34 of 72 available. I'm sick. Make all 72 available. Yeah. The, no, there's 72 highlights that I made in that novella, and there's 32 pages. I Am I okay in the head? That's over two highlights per page. Yeah. I mean, I think we all assumed neither one of us was okay before we did this, so, you know, it's okay. Should we do one for, uh, The Deal by L. Kennedy? Because I have highlights for that, too. I mean, if I ever read it, yeah. That means you should read it for an episode. <laughs> it's on my TBR somewhere. I think I actually I like it. own it. <laughs> I technically own it too because it was free. Yeah, on yeah, yeah. That's another thing. If you're, I don't know if anywhere else, but in America, Unleashed is free on Kindle. I highly recommend. It's don't for worry. the low, low price of zero dollars and zero cents. I instantly bought that bitch. Real. I, the, I think the other two unfortunately cost money. Yeah, they do. I'm sad. I really thought they'd be on Kindle Unlimited. I don't know. I don't make the rules here. I just read the books. Mm. Anyway, so you done? Yes. Okay, that's it for the time. It is currently an hour and 54 and a half minutes. God, why are we like this? (laughs) Whoops. I knew it. I knew it with all my highlights. Or message, well, my highlights, but also my notes. I knew it. Um, especially the way that uh, I gotta change my settings because the screen capture thing I'm doing to record this um only allows me to do two hours max, so I gotta end this fast. Um, 
in the description is our links. I forgot to mention that in the last one. It's fine. Um, the next episode, in case you want to read it, uh, first is the second Ice Planet Barbarians book. Um, because yes, I will uh -huh. read the first three for this podcast, and then I will probably never read any of them ever again. Um, Hear me out. Don't even read the next two. No, I'm gonna do it. I already have the audiobook for the next one. The way I'm gonna do it, uh, for them is uh, I'm just gonna listen to them all in or listen to it all in one sitting and then I'm just gonna type up a summary um and that's gonna be what the episode's gonna be um I'm not gonna I believe in that. I'm not gonna like it's gonna be maybe a page or two it's not gonna be anything crazy um, listen all I wanna know is if there's gonna be any more lore about them alligators <laughs> <laughs> listen listening to that episode as I was editing and you were like the alien alligators and I was like the two sons science question mark we, we you know like, what who cares about the sons? alien dick functions and whatnot let's worry about the the weird other alien creatures and the two sons that's what's important I love how there's two sons technically in the listening and an ice planet barbarian I love that for us I love how it's an ice planet but there's two suns. Make it make sense. I don't know. I don't know how stuff works, okay? Anyways, um... I didn't write them. Don't talk to me about it. <laughs> that's the... next episode. Um, so, like, stay tuned for that, uh, if you want to know that. It is Araka, then normal book, then Araka, then normal book. I say as, like, I'm pretty sure, uh, both this book and the next uh non erotica and then the next non erotica after that all have in the notes this is more erotic than dinosaur which is the last erotica i did so you know <laughs> we love that for me um but yeah next episode i'm gonna read that whole book and then uh explain the whole entire plot to sing ray and hope neither one of us just combust into confusion and or just annoyance you know either one I'm serious about the alligator lore, though. I'm serious about the sun lore. The way that the first book actually had a good chunk of lore, and I was more intrigued with that than I was the stupid romance. <laughs> that says a lot about me. <laughs> I think this is why I need to read Katie Robert. After after I finish the Ice Planet Barbarians, the first, or the second and the third one, I'm not going to read it anymore, and then I'm just going to read some Katie Roberts for this podcast. I'm going to have a good time. With some Katie when are Roberts. we reading the Thruple book? The Thruple book? Which oh the Katie Roberts Apple book I don't know which one that is give me a second I'll look it up after it's I the stop the episode one. it's the Beast one I know that one it's the Beauty of the Beast one it's green right I think so I meant to stop the recording but that's fine uh it's the fourth one called the Beast it is greenish yes I don't know I'm colorblind with the way I, I know. know. But yes, it's Gaston, the Beast, and Belle. Good times. And um, with that knowledge, I'm, I'm I'm ending the podcast here. Um, and we'll talk to you next time. I don't know how to end these off ever. <laughs>